Okay, cool. So um, thanks everyone. This is Shooting Zhao from Namada. And today, Jim and I are going to present Kiverno, which is a Kubernetes native policy management tool, which helps you to uh, uh, manage your cluster configurations. Just an overview about this session. We're gonna be talking about what is Kiverno and why people are using Kiverno, how, this, how it works. And also I'll give you some of the examples of what Kiverno policy looks like. And then I'll show you a quick demo of how to install Kiverno and how you can apply the policy to your cluster. And in the end, we will have a Q&A session and we'll take any questions you have and answer it online. All right, just a quicker in, in, introduction of the presenters today. We have Jim Baguadia. He's the founder and CEO at Namada. And also my name is Shooting Zhao. I'm also a developer at Namada. And uh, I'm a initial author of this Kiverno project and a contributor from the Kubernetes multi-tenancy working group. All right, so let me hand over to Jim. He'll be discussing what is Kiverno. Thank you, Shooting. Hi, everyone. And thanks for joining us for this presentation. So what I'm gonna introduce is just quickly some key concepts and some background on Kiverno, and then we'll deep dive on some demos and some other best practices uh, that we're seeing evolve in the community around policy management. So first off, Kiverno means govern in Greek. That's the most common question we get. What does it mean? Uh, what, what's the name? Um, so we thought it was fitting for what this project does, and that's why we chose it as a name. It sounds nice too. And what Kiverno is, is basically a policy engine designed specifically for Kubernetes. So as opposed to other, other solutions, which might be general purpose policy engines, Kiverno was built for Kubernetes, so it adopts all of the best practices, the patterns, the idioms that you would see in Kubernetes that you would, might be familiar with if you were a cluster administrator or even a user of Kubernetes itself. So let's, before we dive into how Kiverno works, let's talk about why policy management is important, right? So Kubernetes configurations, and all of us probably have a love-hate relationship with them, right? Because uh, they're super powerful, you can do so many things, they're declarative, which is fantastic, but they are complex. There's a lot of you know, YAML management, there's a lot of details that could get lost and muddled in these configurations. And one of the big challenges we see with enterprise customers, um, with end users is that maybe 20% of the YAML matters to developers and perhaps the rest you know, belongs more to operations. Some might be specific to environments, but all of this is in a single YAML manifest. So obviously this YAML has to be composed or has to come together across a pipeline, much like we would for code and other deliverables, right? So there are tools like Helm and Customize, which can help, of the, help with this outside of the cluster. And that's, you know, that's probably one of the solution or one type of solution you wanna to go to. But then you also have a need for certain configuration rules, which need to be enforced, which need to be validated. And the best way to do that in Kubernetes is with admission controllers, right? So you can, because of the flexibility and the extensibility of Kubernetes, we can now you know, validate, mutate, generate configurations as part of admission control. And much like RBAC works or other, you know, other things, uh, other parts of Kubernetes uh, work, your admission controller can now become, you know, act as a policy engine or as um, something which you know, uh, acts as a gatekeeper for configurations which are going inside of the cluster itself. So with that, policy management tools like Kiverno and others like OPA or OPA, which is Open Policy Agent, have become fairly popular. And they allow, the, the, what they solve is this ability to write rules without having to, you know, um, uh, sort of manage them in a complex manner outside multiple clusters, and then also apply them uh, at admission control and without having to create custom controllers uh, each time you want to do some something to this nature. 
So why Kiverno, right? So the goal that we had when we started this project was um, to make policies very familiar and easy to write for cluster operators and cluster, and, and the results should be easy to process for cluster users. So there are, again, you know, there are other solutions, like I mentioned, OPA. So that's, of course, a very powerful solution. It's capable of doing a lot of different things. But there is, there is complexity. There's a learning curve. There's different languages to be, you know, learned for that. So the goal with Kiverno was to use, you know, the best of Kubernetes. And again, for Kubernetes operators users, make it very simple for them to either validate configs, uh, make sure that if they want to mutate things like add labels, annotations, things like that, it's very simple to do. And then also so I have some powerful features which fit into, you know, as Tasha mentioned, with multi-tenancy, um, what we're seeing is this need to be able to generate configurations on the fly, which could be things like role bindings, resource quotas, network policies. So things like that, Kiverno is very suitable for doing um, within Kubernetes clusters. The other thing we wanted to make sure is that we can support all types of resources. So including custom resources and you're not uh, bound to a specific set that some library author or some vendor has developed, right? So it could be any resource that you might also, either you're writing your custom resources or any other upstream or a community resource. And finally, of course, we wanna make sure we're adopting and using all of the best practices, patterns within Kubernetes itself, like things like owner references, label selectors, uh, pod controllers, how they interact with pod runtimes, things like that, Kiverno not only leverages, but also uses, as we'll see in the examples. So basically, Kiverno is an admission controller. So when, when it gets a request from the API server, it's in the format of an admission review. And Kiverno has built up you know, policies of first-class resources. They're uh, custom resources in Kubernetes. Um, as our policy violations and other outputs. So Kiverno caches these in memory for fast processing and our guarantee for admission requests is under two seconds to process any policy or rule. And so from, because this cache is all built up in memory, uh, it's extremely fast in being able to apply the rules that are necessary. And these rules could either you know, validate configs and if you have turned on the enforce mode, then they will you know, block configurations from being applied. If, it's, uh, if the goal is to create violations and report them, that would be done as a background operation, just again for speed of processing. And then Kiverno can also mutate and generate configs as required, right? So the request uh, is sent back to the API server with any mutations or you know, if it's blocked, of course, then the, the failure request is sent back. Kiverno also generates events uh, on the resources itself. So the resource owner can clearly see what the policy has done. If there's any mutations, things like that. It generates policy violations, like I mentioned. And also Kiverno has a mode where if there's existing resources already in the cluster before the policy was applied, you can, it will still scan in the background and validate those resources and apply the results to them. So here's what a policy looks like at a very high level. So a policy is a bunch of rules. Each rule will have a match or exclude block. You could have both. And you can match resources based on kinds, names, label selectors, namespaces, even user groups, user roles, right? So very, very powerful in terms of how you wanna match and exclude. And you can compose exactly what you want your policies to apply to. So for example, maybe you want it to apply to all pods, except for users in the cluster admin group, things like that can be done uh, very easily in Kiverno. And then once you match or exclude um, certain resources, you can write a mutate, validate, or generate rule. And we'll look at quickly at the structure of each of these. So here's an example of a match block, right? So as you can see, it's on the right, this is the actual YAML. And what it looks like is it's matching one, one resource, a pod. Uh, by the way, Kiverno also has a feature where policies written at a pod level can automatically gen be generating rules for controllers. So that's a more advanced feature, but it covers 
some of the use cases where you want to write policies that apply across the board, but you want them, uh, you know, you want the re reporting, the error reporting to happen at the deployment level or stateful set or any other pod controller. So here, and what this rule is doing is once it matches that, that kind of resource, it's just enforcing that the pod is not running as a root user. So it's extremely simple. Again, as you can see, it matches the structure of what you would see in a pod YAML. And you can quickly enforce that run as non-root has to be set to true in, in these to allow the configuration to work. Here's an example of a mutate, or actually two examples, right? So the first example is showing a JSON patch style uh, mutate, right? So that can uh, add, remove JSON elements or in, in your incoming resource. And the second example is showing more of an overlay style. So if you're familiar with Customize, Customize also uses overlays, which are basically fragments of YAML that you can apply. So in, this, in the bottom two examples, what we're showing is how you can, for example, if you want to say, if a port is named secure, you want to set the port number, uh, or if the name is secure, set the port number to 6443 in this example. Um, so you can see there's also a little bit of you know, logic that we have added here. So it's very lightweight, easy to learn syntax, which is doing an if then else type of um, you know, condition. And the second is saying, if a port is not defined, so if the port number is not defined, then default it to 6443. So if it's already defined, it will leave it alone and not change it. Here's an example of a validate pattern. And as you can see, that's extremely simple as well, right? So this is a common example where you want to add some default YAML or labels to your YAML. So in this case, uh, let's say an app label, you want every resource owner to use the app label. So you can very easily say that that needs to be non-empty. And if you notice the way we're saying non-empty is it needs to have, using these wildcard patterns, it needs to have at least one or more characters. You can also use for numeric values, you can use operators like greater than, less than, not equals, et cetera. So very easy to do things like if you want memory limits to be less than like uh, 64 GB or something like that, that can be done as a custom policy as well. And finally, an example of a generate rule, right? So this is again, a very powerful feature of Kiverno where here we're showing that, you know, have a network policy. So this denies all traffic, ingress, egress, and it's something that, you know, can be used as a default policy when a new namespace is created and then the namespace owners, the workload owners can go in and add additional policies as required for their workload, but this is a simple starting point. So this, this can be triggered for any type of resource. Namespaces are of course a very common example, but you can do generate rules on any type of resource. And today what, what we support is the ability to copy data from existing resources or form inline data within the policy itself. So going back to when to use Kiverno versus some alternatives like OPA, right? So, you know, again, uh, OPA is a very powerful tool and you're, the best way to answer that we think is by looking at examples, right? So um, on the left, we're showing a policy, you know, which, uh, so this the same policy written with both Kiverno and with Rego which is the language used by OPA, right? So uh, with Rego, as you can see, it looks very much like a programming language. And, you know, there's a, there's a number of different checks that you can do. And with Kiverno, this is, looks like a declarative YAML uh, where in both cases, what it's doing is making sure that the, uh, the file system for the pod is marked as read-only, right? So the intent is, is to make sure that read-only uh, file system or uh, the root file system is set as read-only. Uh, but of course, again, if you're, you know, if you're uh, a Kubernetes admin, if you're familiar with the structure of what the pod syntax looks like, the goal here is to make that very easy as you can see uh, with this example on Kiverno. All right, so thanks, Jim. Uh, for move on to our next session, I will I will give you a live demo. 
of how to install Kiverno and how you can apply the policy to your cluster. So to get started, we have three examples today. As Jim has described, we support mutate, generate, and validate policy. So for the first mutate policy, um, it is to insert an annotation on the pods with the local storage. So typically with Kubernetes the cluster autoscaler, it won't allow you to evict the pod, which is defined with the local storage. But if you want to make any exceptions, you can use such a policy to insert the annotation. And then for the validate policy, um, sometimes you may want to to enforce a best practice, you may want you don't want to schedule a pod or start a container as a root user. So with such a policy, you can enforce your pod security, pod runtime security best practices. And also last with the generate policy, um, I will show you based on the namespace creation, it'll trigger the generation of the default resource quota. All right, to get start with, we have this installation page to uh, guide you how to install Kiverno to your cluster. But here I'm going to uh, pull the manifest from the GitHub and apply it to my cluster. So I'm using a Minikube 115 cluster. To install a Kiverno manifest, I just need to do a cuddle create and it'll pull the manifest and creates a namespace called Kiverno. And the Kiverno itself will start it as a deployment in your cluster. Okay, now you can see the Kiverno pod is running now. And then let's take a look at the policy, what the policy looks like. For our first mutation policy, here you can see we define the mutate policy with the keyword and we're using the overlay style policy. And with the match block, I'm saying that I want to match all pods, whatever the namespace or selector is. And, and as Jim has described, we support two types of anchors. One is the conditional anchor. Here it matches the pod defined with volume type emptitter. And also with this plus conditional anchor, we will uh, say that I want to insert this annotation if it's not defined in your pod manifest. Okay, then let's first create the policy to your cluster. Just do a cuddle create with the manifest you have. Then if you do cuddle get cluster policy, you will see we have one policy deployed to a cluster. And we have the short name called SIPO because it's always long to type in. You can also get the cluster policy as well. And now let's look at the resource I have. I have a single pod defined with empty dir volume. And in this case, since I have a policy defined to insert an annotation, I'm expecting after the pod is created, I can see this annotation on the pod under the annotation. So let's try to create the pod. The pod is running. Okay. If you get the pod manifest, you will be able to see the annotation is added to your uh, pod manifest. So that's what a mutation policy works and how it looks like. And then let's move on to the next validate policy. So for a validate policy, we have this failure action defined. And here we set it to enforce which means I want to block the resource creation if this resource is violating your policy. And with this validate keyword, I'm saying that uh, with all pods, I want to check if I have the security context run as non-root non user set to true. So if the pod is defined without this security context, you would expect the pod creation is blocked by keyword. Now. Okay, then let's go back to the cluster and apply the policy. Again, to get a policy, you just do cuddle get and we say that there is a policy created for to disallow root user. And let's look at the pod manifest. 
again, it's a sing single pod, and I'm not defining the security context at the pod level. So what I'm expecting is that this pod creation will be blocked. Applying the resources. All right, so you can see that it says admission webhook, kernel validate webhook denies the request. And here you have the resource type, resource information, and also which policy is actually blocking your resource creation. So what if you don't want to block resource creation? We have an option to change it to, to change the failure action to audit. And that makes your policy like a soft policy, which will allow the resource creation, but it'll reload, uh, report the policy violation instead. So let's edit the manifest first with this. False. Now you can see I have changed the validation failure action to audit. And let's save it and quit. Um, probably I need to change it again. Yeah, it's not successful. So successfully saved. Okay, cool. So now it's created, it's uh, updated, and let's reapply the manifest to the cluster. Now you can see the pod is created here. But if you further look at the policy violation, policy violation. you can see here the policy violation is created for this pod in particular. And let's take a look at the manifest. It gives you the resource information and it'll show you the error message we have seen in the block scenario. And also as a operator, you may want to see what happened with your pod. Kiverno also creates the events for that. So here we attach an event say that the policy violation that typically your pod is violating one of the policy in your cluster. So you can get more information of the current situation. All right. And then let's move to the generate policy. And here for this generate policy, I'm saying that I want to trigger on the namespace creation. And whenever there is a new namespace created, I want to create this default resource quota. Since I'm using many cubes, so I define a lower resource quota here, but you can always customize based on your cluster capabilities. And here you may want to ask, what is this bracket means? Actually, we support uh, one feature called a variable substitution. It fetches the data from the admission request and we replace the namespace with the, inco with the incoming request says I want to create this resource quota inside this common namespace. And let's see what will happen with this policy. If you get policy, we have this new policy created. And now let's create a namespace to see what, to see if that default resource quota has been generated. All right, so with the new uh, namespace creation, I'm able to see there is a default resource quota being created in the cluster. All right, going back to the slides. Yeah, that's all the examples I have today, but uh, we have more best practices available on our GitHub page. You can go to this um, samples folder to check the best practices policy we have. And feel free to import to your cluster and see what will happen. All right, um, move on to the next. Since now we have introduced a lot of features that Kubernetes support so far, but um, we have a lot more requests from the community as well. 
Um, typically for generate policy, we are not only allow the resource creation, but we also allow the clone from the existing resource. But you may want to keep syn synchronized from your original resources. So we're working on the, such a feature to generate and synchronize from the original resource. And also with the variable substitution I have showed you in the demo, uh, in the example, that right now we only allow to fetch data from the admission request. But you may also want to get the data from external resources, like if you have a config map defined in your cluster, you may want to sub substitute the values within the policy from your config maps, right? And for another uh, features that we're working on is the fine grained access control. For example, if you want to allow or deny an operation based on the admission request, you can do it with such a policy. For example, if you only want to allow a certain type of user or group to create a resource, that you can use a policy to uh, guarantee your access control. And this will be helpful for you to create your multi-tenancy environment as well. All right. So um, again, feel free to try Kiberno in your cluster and play around with it a little bit. And if, if you see any bugs, feel free to log an issue in our GitHub repo. And also, if you want us to support any of the features of the policies, you can join our Slack channel and we would like to discuss further offline. Okay, some takeaways and summaries. So far, we have uh, introduced Kiverno, what the Kiverno is and how Kiverno policy are useful to manage your cluster configuration as, at scale. And also since Kiverno is built for Kubernetes, it can use to validate, mutate, and generate configurations. And what I have shown you, we have those best practice policies available on our GitHub page, which can be useful for your pod security and isolation. Again, um, Kiverno is really easy to getting started with. As I have shown you, it's one, man, one line command to import your cluster. And feel free to import all the best practices to your cluster as well. And we would love to hear any feedback from you. All right, that's pretty much all I have for this session. Again, thank you all for joining. And if you have any questions, we're ready. Awesome. Thank you so much, Xu Ting and Jim. Um, we did have one question from uh, the YouTube uh, channel. And so the question was, how can I, how does this work integrate with uh, OPA? Right. Yes, yeah, a good, good question. And there's active discussions ongoing on that um, in the policy working group. So certainly, you know, um, good to your thoughts ready and get feedback on that within the blogging group um, as well. But just very briefly, some of the thought process there. So Kiverno and uh, OPA or OPA do, you know, like, like you're seeing some similar things, but they're designed for different purposes, right? Uh, OPA is, is a general purpose policy tool, which can do, you know, uh, more than just Kubernetes policies. Um, and, and it's good, you know, from, from that point of view, Kiverno was designed for Kubernetes, like we have said. What's common between the two, and there's also, of course, you know, other projects like KRails, there's projects um, like Falco, which are also doing runtime policies. So I think that the general discussion in the community right now is there will be multiple policy tools and multiple ways of doing policies. Uh, but perhaps uh, what, what's necessary is some common constructs and, and to figure out what the commonalities are and at least have some common ways of reporting, managing policies uh, across clusters, right? So, and then allowing choice based on what works best, even choice of policy language, perhaps. So that's kind of some of the thinking and the discussions that are ongoing in the community. One of the starting points, I think, shooting showed, um, how Kiverno produces a policy violation as a, uh, as a Kubernetes resource. So one discussion we are having is perhaps as using that, uh, the policy violation as one of the first common constructs that can be you know, generated through any policy engine. So at least there's one way of reporting violations and managing violations 
independently of how the policy is written or which engine is producing that. Excellent. Jim, shooting, thank you so much for helping us close out the San Francisco hours. Uh, we're so excited to have you. Thank you for sharing this. I'm very excited to see uh, the progression of this project going forward. All right. Thank, thank you. you.